The prelude to our film starts with a lady sitting in a wheelchair, looking out of the window. A doctor comes to ask her how she's feeling. She says she is better than yesterday, having had some sleep. She is Claire, who we then see with her family. While she sits on a couch, with her husband sleeping beside her, she hears a door creaking. It prompts her to investigate. Upon entering a certain room, Claire leaves after a few seconds, with a blanket. Suddenly, it seems like she used a what could have happened in that room for such a small amount of time to make her take such drastic action. The scene changes completely, to a young guy waking up in bed. Shortly after, he sits in a university classroom. He is Alex, our protagonist. The professor lectures about the dimensions of the universe, and how life forms of different orders of complexity operate within them. He states that humans live in a larger dimensional reality, given their larger mental capacity. But there could be an even larger existence humans cannot perceive. One student, Ben, asks if, with increased awareness, people could see into this astral world. The professor says there is research to support it. Another student reacts in disbelief. Alex, however, says it seems feasible. He wonders if that world could be accessed. At that point, the professor starts talking about astral projection. He says it might be possible for one to detach their spirit to enter another plane of existence. After class, Ben belittles the idea of astral projection, likening it to fairy tales. Then Alex enters a library. A girl from class, Alyssa, comes to him there. Seeing several books that Alex is planning to read, she says she's glad he's taking the topic seriously. Alyssa asks if he wants to go with her somewhere, though he rejects her invitation. This is a time for study. When he enters his dorm, we just see him lying in his bed. In the morning, Alex joins his friends outside. He tells them he tried astral projection, but it proved to be useless. We are left wondering, how exactly did he try it? He dismissed the concept, because he learned about it for a few hours and it didn't work as he tried putting it to use. His friend, Jordan, even says something similar, that he looked at it, yet couldn't figure it out. He advises Alex to talk to the professor about it. With that advice, Alex comes to Professor Gareth so he can help him understand astral projection better. He says he wants to try doing it. Gareth asks him why he wants to do it. The reason Alex gives is that he wants a more practical understanding of the spirit, though it's uncertain if this is his real reason. The professor starts explaining it some more. After he does, Alex asks if astral projection allows people to contact spirits that aren't in this world. Gareth says it's possible. We now see where Alex may be going with his interest. Gareth also gives him a name, Michelle Collins, who possesses more knowledge about the subject. Then Gareth starts telling him how he engaged in astral projection. Alex appreciates any help he can get. Later, we see him talking on the phone with his dad. Alyssa is nearby to eavesdrop on it. They seem to be in an argument. Alex's father hid something from him for a long time. Someone lost their life, and Alex was left to deal with it on his own. Due to this, he ends the call out of frustration. Alyssa quickly avoids being seen. In a flashback, Alex talks to his dad. He feels like his father left him out of everything. Though his dad tells him that Alex was very young, he didn't know when to tell him. He tries explaining to his son, but he won't have it. It was a cryptic conversation, where we don't quite know where the frustration was concentrated. After that, Alex searches the internet for how to do astral projection. At some other time, we see Alyssa at a party. She tries calling Alex, yet he doesn't answer his phone. So she leaves a message for him regarding whether he wants to join the party. He does not want to be distracted, making him flip his phone over. During another flashback, Alex's dad gives him a box of items. Then we get to hear what the professor told Alex about how to perform astral projection. Alex starts doing it as we hear Gareth's words. There is a certain verse the professor likes to use when he engages in it. So Alex repeats it. In the morning, the phone wakes him up. Shortly after, he goes to meet his friends, where he informs them he saw himself out of his body last night. He says he perfected astral projection, but Alyssa corrects his arrogant statement by saying he can't perfect something in one night. Since they want proof of this, Ben starts talking about how to detect the energy of a spirit, so he explains what needs to be done. It will require a pendulum. Later in Alex's room, Jordan sets up that simple pendulum. Meanwhile, we observe Alyssa in a library, telling their friend, Karina, that Alex has recently been distant. Karina replies that Alyssa should tell him how she feels. She seems to like him, but she doesn't want to tell him. She also says Alex has personal problems to deal with, telling Karina about the talk she overheard with Alex and his father. Furthermore, she reveals that Alex didn't even know he lost his mom. This makes her realize that that might be the reason why he's obsessed with astral projection. Back in his room, Alex turns on his webcam to record himself undergoing astral projection. We see certain sections take place in Fast Forward. While it happens, the pendulum swings. He also moves around oddly in his sleep. The pendulum swings quite strongly as time goes by. On the next day, he shows the recorded footage to Jordan. After seeing the pendulum swing, Jordan says the window may have been open. He is not a quick person to convince. Once the rest of the group joins them, they see the recording too. Alex says he was out of his body to push the pendulum. As Jordan keeps watching it, they see it move more. However, Alex says he only moved it one time. Then he starts doing astral projection again. Eventually, the pendulum swings. It even starts swinging strongly later on. 
The rope on the lamp swings too. Soon the pendulum vanishes until it returns. It is uncertain why that happened. In the morning, Alex watches the recording outside his room alone. He sees a shadow there and doesn't know what to make of it. Shortly after, Jordan comes to him with Alyssa. He shows them the footage, thinking the shadow is him. Yet Jordan thinks otherwise. When he's alone again, Alex messages a specialist on the internet regarding the shadow. The man is Dr. James Leffler. In their room, Jordan turns off the lights. To his surprise, he sees a shadow in the dark, which disappears when he turns the lights back on. On the next day, he reports this incident to Alex and Ben. Ben dismisses the idea, but Jordan firmly says something was there. Afterward, Alex goes to his computer to check if he got an answer from James, the doctor. Indeed he did, though James tells him to stop engaging in astral projection. This makes Alex type a new message, stating that he stopped, but he keeps seeing things. His friends are also experiencing abnormalities. After he sends the message, we see the man he was typing to. At night, Alex wakes up to hear strange whispers. He thinks it's his flatmates talking in the kitchen. But when he turns the lights on, no one is there. Shadows appear only after he turns the lights off. It seems like they are beings that reside in minimally lit settings. On the next day, Alex comes to meet the doctor. That was rather fast, after only a few exchanges. Alex describes his situation to the doctor. What James takes interest in is Alex's pendant. He says he saw it once. Before telling him he spent years trying to understand the shadow people. A flashback then reveals James coming to Claire, the one from the beginning. James believes she was Alex's mother. At that moment, Alex realizes James is the reason his mom was released early from the hospital. It brings frustration upon him, because this means James was, to Alex, partially responsible for her demise. The doctor says he wants to help him, but Alex can't handle being there. As he walks on the school campus, he perceives a shadow slowly turning into a person. He has to stop to collect himself. In the library, he briefly sees a shadow person with horns. This one is more fleshed out than the others. His visions are now consuming him negatively interfering with his life. So far, all he received from attempting astral projection is a bad experience. Following that, we see James in his office. Once he turns off his lamp, a shadow stands before him, so he turns the lamp back on. Of course, the shadow is no longer there. It reappears as he leaves the room. We then see Alex walking, hearing ominous whispers. He is met by Alyssa right near his room. She wants to chat with him, which he welcomes. When they enter his room, she says she's been wanting to talk to him for a while. She confesses that she likes him, prompting him to kiss her. He lets her know she is a big part of his life, and that he's scared of losing her. But she tells him that won't happen. After that, we see Alex's pendant lying in some strange place. The shadow Alex saw in the library roars, as our view approaches it in the fog. Due to that, Alex wakes up in bed, with Alyssa near him. A shadow forms behind him, which soon seems to drag Alyssa out of bed. Being confused, she gets told by Alex there is something in the room with them. Subsequently, Alex comes to visit James again. He apologizes to the man about yesterday. He also says his father recently told him what happened. On top of that, his situation is getting worse. He saw a different being from the ones before, one that has horns. James replies that if this is a spiritual matter, he doesn't know how to handle it. To those words, Alex starts losing control. He wants a solution to this hideous problem. All James can do is say that Alex's attempt at astral projection may have opened a gateway that was meant to be shut. He also gives him a book by Michelle Collins, the same person Alex's professor told him about. Back in his room, Alex tells Alyssa that James can't help him. So he looks up Michelle on the internet to book an appointment with the lady. This could be his only chance. Later, they sit with her in her house. She presents herself as someone who engages in all sorts of mystical practices. To begin, she gives Alex a deck of tarot cards to shuffle. After he does, Michelle places three cards on the table, face down. She flips over the first two and explains to him what they mean. As she flips the third card, however, her face tells us she becomes distressed. It is the devil card, making her say that Alex brought something there with him. She wants them to leave, and as Alyssa tries to, a door shuts instantly. Michelle may want it, though something else does not. The lady tells them she's never done a reading like this. Alex's cards represent a dark change in his life. She saw the shadows. Their only choice, according to her, is to banish them. But one is more powerful than the others. They need to find its name to understand its weaknesses. At this point, Michelle asks Alex if he tried astral projection. He did, he says, to find his mother. She wants him to do it again, yet he doesn't want to, for it brought him only danger. Despite his fear, he must do it to demand the being's name. Michelle lights a candle, telling him to look into it. While he does, he loses consciousness. This causes the lady to say a prayer. Alex's body sits up in response, though his mind is still absent. Then Michelle uncovers the table, where there are letters, along with a device to point to them. She starts using it with Alyssa, while commanding the being to tell them its name. Soon enough, the dark being appears behind Alex, but they can't see him. Michelle tells Alex to demand its name. This causes her device to start moving to different letters on the table. It spells out Amiman. For some reason, Michelle thinks it's impossible. She also wants Alex to end his astral projection. At that moment, he starts talking demonically. It causes the mystical lady to recite an incantation. As she does, the demon within Alex makes him laugh. 
After the recital, Alex jumps on Alyssa to start choking her on the floor. Michelle chants something else, making Alex return to his normal form. With the darkness now gone, he and Alyssa hug each other. They made it. He never did get a chance to see his mother, but he got rid of the evil that he unleashed. After all that, Alex comes to visit his father at a later time. He goes with Alyssa. While inside, they look at Alex's childhood drawing. Alex seems troubled by a certain one. That is when we return to the scene where his mom, Claire, went to check the sound upstairs. As she goes, we see Alex drawing near his dad as a little boy. He draws the family and a big shadow figure standing near them. It seems like he knew about it even back then. That is likely what his mom But this also means the shadows were there before his astral projection.